Okay, let's take a look at a couple of strategies involved uh, in balancing equations, all right? Now, what I've given you is a couple of combustion reactions here that have a lot of oxygen all over the place, okay? So you notice that oxygen shows up in three different spots, and that's probably the worst place to begin. We don't want to start trying to balance the oxygen. So let's start simple, and we'll do this methodical. Let's start with one element at a time. Let's take a look at carbons, okay? Right here, I've got two carbons. So I have to have two carbons on the other side. Now remember, this two right here only applies to the oxygen. It has nothing to do with the carbon. This only shows one carbon in the molecule of carbon dioxide. So right now I've only got one. I would like to have two of those, so I'm going to put a big two in front of carbon dioxide. Okay, and that gives me two carbons. Now in my mind, okay, I'm going to do this. On, on paper I'm really not, but in my mind I'm kind of like crossing this out. Okay, it doesn't cancel out and go away, but in my mind, I'm kind of checking off the list. I've got carbons taken care of. There's two on each side. Now let's move to the next element. Let's go to hydrogen. Remember, we're saving oxygen for last. I know this too affects the oxygens. We'll deal with that at the end. We have six hydrogens. Okay, I have six on the left. I would like to have six on the right. Okay, but I don't have six on the right. I've only got two there in the water molecule. So I'm going to multiply this molecule by three. Three times two gives me six. And now my hydrogens are taken care of. So in my mind, I'm kind of checking those off the list. Okay, I don't really cancel them out, but I'm taking care of it mentally. I'm like, I don't have to deal with them anymore. But now comes the fun part, the oxygens. What I would really like to do is not change this two or this three. If I change those numbers, that's going to affect all of these, and then I just got to go back through it again. So instead of changing either one of these numbers, I'm going to total up what they are. But in terms of just oxygen, now let's think about the distributive property in math. That two applies to everything in here. There's two carbons, and there's two times two, there's really four oxygens. Over here, there's six hydrogens, like we just talked about, but there's also three oxygens. I need to add those together, and I get a total of seven. Now the whole point of this is, I need to have seven oxygens on the other side. Total, out of everything here, seven total oxygens. But here I run into a problem, okay? I need to have seven total oxygens, but oxygen's a diatomic molecule. There's two of them there. I can't take a whole number and multiply it by two and have it come out to be seven. This is an odd number. It would be really nice if that was even. So one of the strategies we've worked on is when you get an odd number that won't fit, and I can't get this total to be seven, I want to take that odd number and I want to double it double all of the amounts to make everything even. I want all my odd numbers to become even. So the way we do this, take a different color here so you can see, is I'm going to start by putting a two in front of the fuel. Okay, I put a two in front of ethane right there. Now I've doubled that amount, but what that's going to do is it's just gonna double every number on this side. I don't even have to really think my way through it, just make them all twice as big. That's gonna become a four, that's gonna become a six, and if you go through and do your analysis, you'll see that this number now turns to an 8, this one turns to a 6, and that one turns to a 14. See how everything gets twice as big. So that means I need 14 oxygens on this side. But now that's an even number, so I can put a 7 here. 7 times 2 gives me 14, and now the oxygen amounts are balanced, and everything else is balanced along the way because I just made it all the numbers twice as big. 2, 7, 4, 6. There's my coefficients that balance that equation. Now, a lot of people get good at that and they start to overuse it. So you have to watch out for a situation that comes up once in a while that really kind of makes this a lot easier than it seems. Okay, it's actually way easier than what people give it credit for. So take a look at this one. This equation looks almost just like this. This is ethane, but the difference here is this is ethanol. And the only difference between those two formulas is this fuel has an oxygen atom, this one does not. And what does that do to me in the long run? I'm going to go through the whole process, but when I get to the end and I'm trying to find a total number of oxygens, I have two places that could produce those oxygens. So let's walk our way through the same process we just did and see where it ends up. Let's start with carbon. Two carbons on the left. I'll put a two right there. Okay, now my carbons are taken care of. Let's go to hydrogens. I've got five hydrogens plus one more. That's six. Okay, still a total of six hydrogens. I need a total of six hydrogens over here. Three times two gives me six. Now all of my hydrogens are taken care of. I have six on the left total and six on the right total. 
Time to work on oxygen. I know it's in every single thing here, so let's take a look at the ones we've already put the numbers in front of because we'd like to not change those if we can help it. Let's tally it up here. Two times two gives me four oxygens. Three times one gives me three oxygens. Once again, I get seven oxygens. Now that's seven total on the right side. I need seven total on the left side, but remember, I've got two places that oxygen's coming from now. I need a combination that equals seven. I would really like to equal seven so that I don't have to change these. And I don't want to put a different number here. If I make this a two or a three or a four, then it's going to change all of those. And I have to go through it again. So I would like to leave this as a one. I would like to just have one oxygen come from this spot right here in the fuel. That means if I'm going to make this equal seven, I would have to have six oxygens come from the other spot, from the oxygen gas. One comes from here, six comes from there, one plus six gives me seven. So I just come up with that combination on my own. Now I look at this and go, all right, if I put a three there, three times two gives me six, six plus this one gives me seven, and I didn't have to double everything to make this happen. But the reason why I didn't have to double everything is, in this case, I had an extra source of oxygen that I could work with in my combinations. Up here, I didn't have that source of oxygen. It all had to come from here, so I had no choice but to double everything. And that's just two different strategies to use in combustion reactions especially. Be careful of when there's an oxygen in the fuel, like this one, and when there isn't. And if you ever get stuck all the way to the end and you get to the last thing and you just can't get it to work out because it's an odd number, take every single number you've got and double it, make it twice as big, and all of a sudden that one will work out. Okay, and there's a couple of strategies for balancing equations.